Hey guys, Engineer Wannabe here. Today we're going to be doing the review for this Seiko SPB149J1. This is uh, the 62 mass reinterpretation, the second round of uh, Seiko's reinterpretations. Uh, the first one was a, a bit larger than this one is, and uh, this is truer to form with a few modern upgrades. But uh, before we get started, a quick wristwatch check. I'm wearing my uh, Grand Seiko SBGW231. A beautiful, uh, beautiful dress piece, but uh, been kind of wearing it on and off on a day-to-day -day basis. But anyway, let's get started. Uh, I, I pre-measured the dimensions on this guy, uh, and I did that in a previous video as well, but uh, let's just blow through that real quick. Uh, the diameter is uh, around 40. I think it's uh, almost bang on at 40 according to my calipers. Uh, the lug-to-lug -lug is slightly above 47. The lug width is 20. And the thickness, according to my calipers, is around 13 and a half, a little less than 13 and a half. Uh, so some very nice dimensions. Uh, it wears uh, really well because of those dimensions. Uh, this, of course, is the 149 variant of the 62 MAS uh, reinterpretation. The 149 is the limited edition model. And this one is limited to 5,500 pieces worldwide. It has a, uh, what kind of blue would you call that, a, a gray-blue dial uh, in keeping in line with the other 55th anniversary uh, model watches, the SLA watches, which are really high-end. And uh, that's about all that's different uh, with this. It's a limited edition. It has this uh, different colored dial, and it comes with a, a strap, actually. The strap uh, uh, is included in the in the box. It's a really nice silicone strap, but we'll talk about that in a bit. Okay, so let's talk a bit about the movement. The movement here is the 6R35, which is Seiko's uh, mid-range movements, uh, maybe slightly below mid-range. Uh, mid it has a 70-hour power reserve, and it's uh, basically an upgrade to the 6R15 that was uh, uh, with uh, that was in some of Seiko's uh, middle-end uh, watches. To go above this, would uh, you would have the 8L movements. Uh, there's also the 6L movements, which are the, the really th uh, thin movements, which are quite a bit expensive as well. So the let's go and look at the uh, finishing. We have some really nice finishing on this model. Uh, horizontally brushed on the side. We have two bevels on either side of the, the watch beautifully beveled the crown is not signed it's brushed as well radially brushed crown on top we have a radial brushing as well very nicely done uh, we have a steel bezel and a steel bezel insert it's a brushed steel bezel insert that's been uh, uh, coated uh, I'm not sure what kind of coating that is but uh, um, it's held up pretty well over the past month. Not that I've really been banging this watch around very much. Uh, the bracelet here is uh, an oyster style bracelet, three link bracelet. Uh, the end link is really nice as well. So it's a very comfortable bracelet uh, and it also is kind of rattly. The tolerances are a bit loose here. So there's quite a bit of rattle, but that uh, relates to a more um, comfortable wearing experience. So the clasp has been upgraded in this uh, uh, this year, at least for the 2020 models. It has a really large flip lock, flip lock which is uh, really satisfying to um, engage. It's a really, really large, really easy to use flip lock. I'm a huge fan of this one. Uh, to dual push button actuation the action is really great and of course we have a dive extension as well Seiko's usual kind of flimsy folded uh, dive extension okay so let's uh, take a listen to this bezel action it's a really easy to turn bezel So 
So not the nicest sounding, not the nicest feeling bezel, but uh, there's a bit of variance. I believe I didn't get the nicest feeling bezel, but uh, thankfully it doesn't line up. This lines up on the dot. So I'm pretty happy about that, um, but unfortunately it doesn't sound or feel the greatest. The uh, uh, There's no, as you can tell, there's no chapter ring. So it, that couldn't have been misaligned. And uh, that's kind of uh, the, the sad part about um, owning a Seiko. You kind of have to roll with the punches, uh, so to speak, that you will get some quality issues. And I've handled quite a few of these, uh, these 2020 models. And, and there have been quite a few quality issues. It's almost a guarantee at this point, which is really sad. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention about the clasp is there is, is, there is uh, four micro adjustment holes which is really useful and they're quite uh, well spaced out. You should be able to get a really good fit. Uh, so I've enjoyed uh, wearing this watch over the past month. I've enjoyed uh, it very much on this silicone strap. I am not a fan of rubber and silicone in general but this strap is so comfortable. And this metal keeper is uh, really nice as well. Uh, I personally have not had any issues with comfort with this metal keeper, just uh, how it sits on my wrist, on my uh, small six and a quarter inch wrist. Uh, this does not dig into anything, but it does have some sharp edges, so I can see that being a problem um, for someone with a wrist where it ends up maybe on this corner and it could dig into uh, uh, your wrist. So uh, keep that in mind, um, but overall this has been really comfortable, I really like the hardware and I mostly wore the watch on this strap. Accuracy on this guy uh, has been at around plus 7, which is uh, not bad, I'm uh, quite satisfied with that. Okay, so let's uh, throw it on the wrist, take my SBGW off. My wrist is six and a quarter inches, as I mentioned before, or 16 centimeters. And uh, it wears, I think, uh, true, to, true to size. So it wears as a 40, 40 millimeter watch should wear. It doesn't wear smaller, it doesn't wear larger. Um, and I, I really like the way it, uh, it wears. It fits really nice. It's really comfortable. The bracelet is really comfortable. I like how the dive extension uh, articulates slightly so that uh, it can add to comfort rather than having a large mass of a clasp here being this long. Uh, it articulates at this point so that adds to the comfort. Finishing is absolutely beautiful. Seiko does the finishing really well and I'm a huge fan of that dial color as well. I do like this gray blue dial color. It uh, is kind of subdued, and I have a I uh, used to have a watch the SPB variant of uh, the Marine Master Two Hundred uh, called the Seiko Twilight, and it had a similar blue dial, and I was a huge fan of that dial. So, uh, one thing to mention is that the difference the difference here over the original 62 mass is the fact that this bezel is a lot thicker uh, than the 1965 um, 62 mass that this watch is based on. The bezel being thicker makes it a bit more aggressive and a lot of people don't seem to like that but uh, I'm a fan of that. I do like the fact that this is a thicker bezel that makes this watch a bit more unique, a bit more of its own thing while still paying respect to the, the 1965 dive watch, Seiko's very first dive watch. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. Uh, we've been reviewing the uh, 1965 reinterpretation watch. Uh, this is the SPB149. Uh, if you guys have any questions about this piece, let me know and uh, I'll try to answer it for you. Uh, other than that, I hope you guys have a great day. Take care, stay safe out there, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.